In this topic, we are going to discuss about transferability of knowledge across national borders. This topic particularly uh, discusses the possibility of transfer of knowledge across national borders. कि कौन सी ऐसे फैक्टर्स हैं जो कि आपके नॉलेज ट्रांसफर को की तरफ कंट्रीब्यूट करते हैं फ्रॉम वन प्लेस टू दी अदर फ्रॉम वन कंट्री टू दी अदर सो दिस इज अ डिस्कशन अबाउट दोज फैक्टर्स व्हिच अफेक्ट द ट्रांसफरेबिलिटी अक्रॉस नेशनल बॉर्डर्स सो द इम्पॉर्टेंट पॉइंट विच इम्पॉर्टेंट डायमेंशन विच अफेक्ट्स दिस ट्रांसफरेबिलिटी इज द साइकिक distance uh psychic distance before uh, uh defining psychic distance uh let's first of all talk about what contributes towards psychic distance uh appropriate knowledge in one con- uh, country may not suit the needs of firm in other countries uh because of uh, the um the culture the social values because of the context uh the knowledge which is uh, useful and effective in one place it may not be suiting the needs in other countries so factors such as different language business culture and institutional framework make up as a psychic distance which is perceived by the managers uh so it psychic distance is something which is the perception which is perception of people working in the in these organizations so if the language is different uh, psychic distance is going to be high if the institutional frameworks are different for example if in one country the institutions are more bureaucratic in other countries the institutions are more participative then the psychic distance is going to be different and then definitely the business culture if the business culture is business oriented professionally it is uh, business oriented then uh, and and uh, at an, another place if the business culture is more of a collective culture is more of uh, a culture in which the professional norms are not really held very um, strictly then it is going the psychic distance is going to be high so a clash between national cultures may jeopardize the international transfer of knowledge uh, so the more psychic distance is there the more difficult it would be for knowledge to be transferred internationally uh, so the knowledge which is being transferred it may need to be um, it may need to be uh, changed adapted adopted according to the different context and um evaluating what are the differences between one culture and the other and how much is the psychic distance between one culture and the other according to that the knowledge has to be transferred and uh, the uh, human resource uh, managers they need to take care of this thing uh, that how much is the psychic distance while being uh, while trying to transfer knowledge from one place to the other uh geographical proximity and cultural affinity both of these two things they affect knowledge transfer between countries and organizations so one is geographical proximity so jo countries ek dusre ke kareeb hain wahan knowledge transfer karna aasan hai uh, because ek dusre ke kareeb hone ki wajah se bahut sare factors hain jo aapke match kar jate hain आपके जो एनवायरनमेंट है वो मैच कर जाता है टेरेन मैच कर जाता है आपके कल्चर जो है वो ऑब्वियसली नेशनल बॉर्डर्स तो ह्यूमन बॉर्डर्स हैं जो आपके कल्चरल बॉर्डर्स हैं वो उसमें कई जगह वेरी करते हैं कई जगह पे नहीं करते सो uh, so अगर जोग्राफिकल प्रॉक्सिमिटी है जो कंट्रीज एक दूसरे के पास पास हैं वहाँ पर नॉलेज ट्रांसफ़र जो है वो आसान uh, काम है बजाय इसके के Um, जो जहाँ पे जोग्राफिकली जो लोकेटेड हु आर फार लोकेटेड फ्राम ईच अदर ओवर देयर द नॉलेज ट्रांसफर इज समथिंग विच इज़ डिफिकल्ट टू डू एंड देन कल्चरल एफिनिटी कल्चरल एफिनिटी मीन्स कल्चरल सिमिलैरिटी कल्चरल हारमनी सो इट इज पॉसिबल द टू कंट्रीज दे आर जोग्राफिकली लोकेटेड अलॉन्ग साइड ईच अदर बट दे आर कल्चरली डिफरेंट बिकॉज ऑफ सम फैक्टर्स 
uh, which affect the uh, culture of that place. So both these things, geographical proximity and cultural affinity, they would affect the knowledge transfer in these organizations. Uh, theoretically, ye kaha jata hai ke kisi bhi knowledge ko ek jagah se dusri jagah transfer karne ke liye ye zaruri hai ke jo cultural proximity uh, cultural affinity or geographical proximity zarur honi chahiye lekin jab hum history of mankind ko dekhte hain to hum ye dekhte hain ke knowledge is like uh, um, it is like uh, cross fertilization of ideas so from one place जैसे क्रॉस फर्टिलाइजेशन प्लांट्स में होती है कि पोलन जो है वो एक जगह से उड़ता है और दूसरी बहुत दूर किसी जगह पे जाके तो फर्टिलाइज होता है और वहां पे जो है वो प्लांट्स वही वाले जो है वो डेवलप हो जाते हैं फर्टाइल ग्राउंड उनको मिल जाता है तो वो वहां पे बढ़ना शुरू हो जाते हैं इसी तरह से नॉलेज जो है उसकी इट हैज द सेम क्वालिटीज Uh, it cross fertilizes from at at great distances because it is something which uh, which uh, uh, makes the human mind curious to know about different things from different areas of the world so we have seen that nations have always been learning from one another we keep on learning from uh, nations which are um, uh, which are existing at the same time at the same uh, a, a cross section of time and we keep on learning from nations from historical uh, perspective as well and we have always seen that rising uh, civilizations they have spread knowledge to other parts of the world so what whichever uh, whichever civilization has been rising in a particular part of the world the knowledge which was developed by that civilization has spread to all over the world so we see that the persian civilization which was before christ and then the greek and roman civilization which was around the christ era then the islamic civilization uh, when islam spread in the world civilization and the knowledge that was created by the islamic scholars that also was spread all around the world and then finally renaissance of the uh, of the european countries and then the british colonialism uh, that spread a lot of knowledge all across the world so british empire it spread its knowledge and knowledge in the form of technology knowledge in the form of organizational structures hum ye dekhte hain ki pakistan mein bahut sari cheeze bahut sare laws bahut sare institutions hamare abhi tak jo hain wo british law aur british system ke upar based hain Uh, so this is uh, uh, this um, transferability of knowledge from one place to the other ab uk jo hai wo hamare se 7000 mil dur hai lekin uske bawajood unke culture unke systems unki jo uh, riwayat hain wo abhi tak jo hai wo hamare culture mein aapko nazar aati hain so transferability jo hai knowledge transferability uh, it takes place from civilizations uh, that are rising in the uh, on the globe uh what contributes nations can learn but in some context extent to which non homegrown practices can be adopted is limited uh so but it is something which is happening at a very fast pace and it is something which is uh, uh, which um, goes against the theory that uh, non homegrown strategies cannot be adopted as we are all adopting all the business strategies that are developed in the american uh, context a uh, national culture and other societal institutions can enhance or diminish a uh, country's ability to avail knowledge from other nations uh, and for that particular uh, thing we look at the example of india versus japan although they have a similar kind of culture both have collectivist cultures but collectivist culture ke andar jo mazid unki qualities aur dimensions hain wahan pe indian aur uh, japanese culture jo hain wo dif, uh, differ karte hain japanese culture is a societal mix of harmonious industrial relations highly educated and skilled workforce relative cultural homogeneity and a sense of collective identity so the, these are the things which are a, a characteristic of the japanese culture they have harmonious um and homogeneous culture whereas uh, in um, 
so in japan it helps the managers to develop manager uh, management practices such as flexible working arrangements quality circles and collective decision making so it is very much easy to establish these quality circles which are based on teamwork it is as easy to establish flexible working conditions because people are conscious about what they need to do and they do it collectively uh, but when we look at uh, india india has also got a collectivist culture but it differs in its collectivism on the basis of how collectivism is applied to various different strata of the society uh, so uh, in india there is confrontational industrial relations there is cultural heterogeneity aapko pata hai ki india mein caste system exist karta hai to unki to already jo um, culture hai wo char strata mein divided hai in addition to the other division of ethnicities uh, then intercommunal hatred and conflicts you know that very well rigid caste system corruption in certain quarters and massive poverty and a high rate of illiteracy especially among manual workers so because of all these factors although india also has a collectivist culture but it is very difficult to uh, replicate and establish the management practices which are so flourishing in japan which are so um, successful in japan it is because of this kind of culture in india heterogeneous culture non harmonious culture conflict oriented culture the practices of flexible working hours of quality circles of team work of collaborative de decision making all of these practices cannot be established and a manager's ability to establish these kind of practices management practices in organization is de it diminishes because the culture over there is not congenial it is not helpful to absorb these kind of management practices so these are kind of almost impossible to implement uh, so that is uh, how the national cultures of different countries they can affect the transferability of organizational knowledge which is uh, uh, management practices are also part of the organizational knowledge so it is difficult to transfer such kind of knowledge from one culture to the other because of their differences in culture so cultural affinity and geographical proximity are two important things which affect the transferability of knowledge within different national borders